Hey everyone, welcome back to a music review. I know we haven't done one in a while. I ended up getting really focused on food reviews, but, you know. That's what December is going to be. It's a lot of music reviews, a lot of catching up before the year ends. Before I do a little retrospective stuff in January. So. We're going to be not reviewing a new album. We're going to be reviewing an older album. And the reason for it is because Disciple is doing a, um, what is it, Anniversary X concert celebrating the anniversary of her uh horseshoes and hand grenades and uh, there are i don't know when it's today it should be coming out that day and i'm recording around 4 6 p.m um i tried doing this morning but you know stuff happens um but i'll put a link down in the description you should be able to go get uh, some merch bundles still i got mine should be coming in a couple days four weeks actually i think it comes in two weeks it'll be coming around christmas time or before Christmas. Whatever. Um, get that. You also get some other stuff. I think you might be able to get tickets. I don't recall. Link it all that stuff. So be down in the description. And, um, yeah. Let's get into the review. Um, Disciple Horseshoes Hand Grenades was real, um, the eighth album um, from Disciple. It released uh, September, 14th, uh, September 14th, 2010. And my. Actually, first intro to metal, um, along with Dead Flowers by Demon Hunter. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed this one. I haven't heard it for a year, like a couple of years, and then I heard this one. Oh, I'm going to listen to it again. I'm going to do a video on it. So, that's also why. Um, but, Things Album's personnel would have uh, guitarist Andrew Welch uh, and Mike. Micah Shannon, bassist Israel, Israel, Israel Ichi, and drummer Trent Reef, along with um, current band members Kevin Young, Josiah Prince, and Joey West, respectively. One of my favorite songs off this album would have to be Dear X and Invisible. Two songs dealing with, um, well, Dear X is a song about uh, dealing with doubt and fear and past troubles and how to not affect over us. Um, because they don't own me. You got no bullets. That's my favorite line of it. Like, go ahead, put a target on my forehead. You got no bullets. <laughs> you know, you don't own me. And it like it amps up. It gets louder and louder. He starts yelling. It's awesome. Um, another album or another song is Invisible, dealing with the loss and those dealing with inner turmoil. Um, that song was actually written by Ben Glover, songwriter for band Firefly and for uh, Brandon Heath. Um, he went on to say in interviews uh, about this album, uh, every time we write a song, one of our goals is how it will affect somebody, not just the lost, but believers who also need to be encouraged, guided, and shepherded. Shep shepherded, it, explains uh, Kevin Young as they're in the writing process for this. I feel like it's very important for us to be honest in everything that we say and create art that's true to us who we are to reach people as clearly as possible. Yeah, that's a really deep song. It's about those who seem like they're invisible. The kid that sits in the hallway, the kid that's in the corner, that one coworker who never talks, that one person on the street that seems invisible to everyone, the homeless people, that they're going through something. Um, I know he, they had, that song uh, was written by Ben Glover and uh, Kevin Young, uh, the vocalist for Disciple. Um, and it dealt with a lot of people you know, dealt with cuttings and everything people that were the invisible and it's probably one of my favorite songs and it's a really soft and sober song um I think one of the other standout tracks in the song was Worth the Pain um Kevin Young again would say it's worth the pain God's in the rain it's never too late to start again it's worth the pain so hold on tonight um I think they're you would want to say uh, there'll be time in life of every Christian that will feel abandoned by God though, um, through an act of death or a personal struggle. They may feel like God is punishing them. Yeah, not that's a little drastic, uh, but also it's anything. It might just be, you know, you're praying for something and just nothing happens. You don't feel like your prayer has been answered. Um, But, like, you know, through whatever uh, trial tribulation we're facing, uh, he is there. It is through um, those low moments, reminds of his love. 
because it, as a Christian, it's not, not going to be high moments. It's there are going to be low times. Um, and it, he, it goes into what Horseman Hand Grenade symbolizes. Um, if I could describe some, it's songs for the lost and the hopeless. It arms them with truth. It arms them with like this willing to go on with the horseshoes and the hand grenades. So there's that whole saying. Um, and I love the Al Martin. It's, it's white, and then you got the grenade and the horseshoes around it, and it's smoking. There's actually a website you can go to. I'll put that. You can get stickers of Al Martin. I get a couple of those and put them on the computer. Like these albums that really that define me. Uh, I'll probably show that off in a video uh, coming up because I do want to do a nerf collection. I do want to do a room tour or something like that. But you know, wait up for those. Uh, another one would be um, Shot Heard Around the World. And it's like really rough in a good way. It's very hard vocals. It starts with with my blood and raised face. Or I believe it. My bloody fist raised to the sky. Yeah. It's some website was describing it as like the Jonathan set for 18 year old rock band. Um, no, it's 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 a war cry, and that's what it is. Um. It's, it's just an awesome war cry. Everything will change. You know, we put our fists to the sky in defiance against the change, you know, with hope. Um, I love this album so much. Um, I think the positives, it's just the message. This message of um, hope and those that are down. I was... When I heard that it was, let's see, I was about 16, 16, 17, and I was like, um, I had to do a testimonial in youth group, and I didn't want to give mine, because I thought mine sucked, it was very basic, um, but this album really helped, it was like, I can give a message, those are down, it's very simple, because I think a lot of Christians feel like, um, and out there just one has to be big and flashy testimony. Doesn't always have to be, be very simple. Just, you grew up in the church and you know it helps make it stronger being around other people. That can be your testimonial. But whatever your testimony is, I want to hear him in the description. Um, and this album really drives home what um, disciples message and that the fact that they don't take out that they're not Christians. Um, especially with albums, other albums like um, Oh God Save Us All um, it's very showing their character and their integrity and I know some Christian bands kind of took that out and I know some bands kept it and that's a whole separate video but I like that they kept that it's probably one of the big positives it's message what it reflects um, I think any negatives I have are very minor it's when I first heard this, I'm like, I like some of these songs, but I don't like the gruff parts. And the older I got, the more I like the rough parts. I like occasionally, I, I like metalcore where it gets screamy sometimes. So I got used to it and I enjoy this album a lot. Listening to this album a lot lately, and I'm loving it even more. Um, it gives this album does give a lot of uh, a mix of ballads for some meaning, meaningful songs. Um, asking God for help, changing and it, like it could help change one's life. You don't know, just playing this album, you don't know. Um, I think this is one of their best albums. I think it's probably my top five disciple albums. And uh, I think they play a lot of. I can't read back in my shirt, but um, some Amazon reviews were like, um, from uh, yeah. This is the first album I've ever gotten by Disciple, and I have to say, I'm pleased. Kevin Young has a great ability for Scream. His voice doesn't have the same range as the lead vocal for a thousand foot crutch, but as long as he stays within the confines of his voice, he sounds great. The reason I like these guys is their music. When I say, and I mean the guitar riffs and the like, the guys on the axe can really grind. Collision is easily the best song on this album right before such as Invisible Remedy and Revolution Now. 
The only thing I don't like about them is some of the earlier music videos are a little ugly and nasty. If you want to see that, I'll go to Rage Against the Machine or Avenged Sevenfold. These lyrics are wonderful, clean, and hold lots of meaning, but I didn't like the image they tried to fit. But despite all their music, it's clean and good, and Kevin is very serious about his authenticity. So I'll say, if you like heavy metal and screamo, this is your band, Ethan Afoy. I wouldn't describe um, Disciple as screamo. Screamo is not really even a term in the metal community. That's a whole, again, a whole separate video. That's something that's coming in 2021. Um, I, I agree with you about um, Kevin's range. He has his range, and it's gotten better after this album. It really got good um, with the Love Later Kill Shot. It got better with other albums after that. Um, that's just how musicians work. The, better, the more music they produce, the more they get to challenge themselves, the better or worse it gets. And I feel like it's been, always been good. And you mentioned Trevor from Making It, but he's got a neat range. He did a lot with the Manifest. And I always want to see that. A TFK Disciple... Um, collab. Wonder if they've done one. Um, there's a lot of meaning. This album is, as I said, I would describe it an album for the hopeless. And music videos. I haven't watched a whole lot of their music videos. Um, a lot, a lot of them recently have just been like lyric videos. Um, that's something I have to look into. Um, but maybe they need a remaster. Maybe that's a good point. I, I don't know. Um, that's really about it. Um, this album did get a Dove Award uh, for the Rock Album of the Year, so in 2012, and a 42nd uh, GMA Dove Awards. Um, and Dear X, You Don't Own Me was nominated for Rock Recorded Song of the Year. I, I feel like it deserved it. I love this album a lot. It has a lot of meaning. It was one of my first rock albums I got from the library. I ripped it off. I know it's probably going to get flagged for that one. Who knows? Um... But I enjoy this album. I enjoy the message a lot. There's so much good about this album. I felt a little more. I hate looking at the negative side of the album, and I couldn't really find any. Um, but I still enjoy this. It's still, it's it's a good album. It's a good album. Um, I, I encourage you to go, go get it. Go ahead, highly rip it from the library, or go buy it yourself off Amazon or off the website. Get some merch for it. Um. Hope to do more of these in December. Stay tuned, and I will see you all later. Stay bearded, faithful, and rock on.